Hello my dear friends, you are in the Military of Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 7th of April of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we are going to talk about Zaporozhye direction, Kherson Zaporozhye direction. Uh, the Ukrainians conducted massive missile strike and drone strike in Energodar, the area of the nuclear power plant. A significant number of drones the Ukrainians used for that purposes and as a result of strike they were attacking the, uh, the area where the, the, the people and the workers of the power plant were uh, eating or something like this. And as a result of that attack, few let's say employees of the power plant were lost their lives so it's not a very good situation of course we see another wave of escalation from the ukrainian side now the russians will be forced to redeploy additional air defense systems on this direction when talking about zaporozhye itself we haven't received lots of updates from the territory according to information we have the russians managed to improve a little bit their positions let's say to the northwest of virbo nothing special just another few square kilometers captured by the russians uh, also, the Russians published um, some videos of uh, counter-artillery duels as a result of uh, counter-artillery strikes. The Ukrainians lost few multiple launch rocket systems. That's very likely the Ukrainians were using, let's say, to attack the Russians during the battle for Abotina. Nothing special, no changes on the ground. The same story we can see in the vicinity of Urajan and Staromayorsk. And probably today, the 7th of April, is the first day uh, during the previous few months when the Russians haven't attacked and uh, haven't published even a single video of, uh, let's say, FAP strike in the vicinity of Staromayorsk and Urajane. Now we are moving probably to the most important areas. And first, we're going to talk about uh, South Donetsk direction, the area between Novomikhailovka, Konstantinovka, and Ugledar. The Russians reported that they finished the preparation of the foothold uh, to the north of Pavlovka, let's say, in the area of this farm. So everything is ready to, uh, let's say, cross the Kashlegach river and to start offensive operation in many directions. During the previous days, as we discussed, the Russians were clearing this area. Uh, the Russians destroyed few machine gun positions. The Russians discovered and destroyed few mortar positions of armed forces of Ukraine. And the Russians also published the geolocations of those strikes. For example, on this video, we can see uh, the Russian reconnaissance work, they managed to discover the Ukrainian mortar hidden position and after that as a result of artillery strike or counter artillery strike that mortar position was destroyed. If we increase the number of this just for one day we're gonna uh, see this icon. On this video, for example, we can see the Ukraine machine gun position and the Russians discovered this machine gun position. Also, as a result of counter fire, this position was destroyed. Uh, if you, uh, m I would like to point your attention that as you can see, uh, the Russians published lots of videos between Uglidar and Pavlovka of how they destroy, were destroying a small targets, not like tanks, not like uh, uh, fortifications, strongholds, not counter artillery reduce with let's say m777 hobbits or opalading the russians were destroying a small points small points but very useful points when talking about repelling of this or that offensive operation because machine gun on this interception of roads um, is was something very not pleasant for the russians if they tried or had uh, let's say attempts um, let's attempts to attack further or mortar position uh, to the north west of um, of uh, uh, Pavlovka that could be used by the Ukrainians to stop the Russian offensive and now all these small points were suppressed by the Russians and the road is completely cleared for further Russian offensive and uh, right as we received the reports about the finishing of the preparation of the foothold before further offensive operation we received significant number of geolocations from Novomikhailovka itself so the number of geolocations from Novomikhailovka itself uh, tell us that very likely the Russians answered the final phase of the battle for Novomikhailovka uh, because uh, they're trying to synchronize both directions either Novomikhailovka, Konstantinovka and Pavlovka Uglidar so that's why by the time the Russians finish Uglidar preparation, the Russians are about to finish Novomikhailovka battle. Significant number of FPV drone strikes, significant number of destroyed Ukrainian soldiers with drones, with uh, Baba Yaga drones, with FPV drone bombings and so on. A lot of geolocations and very likely, very likely this week, obviously we're going to receive additional updates of additional Russian progress. Maybe the Russians will capture completely Novomikhailovka, maybe they will just take few more streets and few more buildings further in direction 
destruction of Konstantinovka. Also, during the day, we got uh, lots of videos of counter artillery duels, another batch of Ukrainian artillery systems, warehouses, and mortar positions in concentration of forces were destroyed as a result of Russian multiple launch rocket strikes in direction of Gannovka, Ilyevka, Elizavetovka. So, this is, let's say, the main Ukrainian logistic hub right now, the concentration of forces, the main operational reserves that Ukrainians use, let's say, to redeploy if something uh, went wrong, the Ukrainians used the area to, through Bagayavlinka to send forces to Ugledar and uh, along the Kashlegachi river, not Kashlegachi, along this river further to Konstantinovka and Novomikhailovka. So this is the main concentration area. There is a forest, very useful place to hide equipment, tank and so on. So that's why the Russians are pretty focused. So everything is about to be finished before the beginning of the next stage of offensive operation. Further to the west, uh, further closer to Kurahova and then further uh, the Kurahova, the Russians also discovered few Ukrainian positions, uh, uh, some, uh, let's say, a base, uh, some training center, exercise, uh, let's say, fields, and as a result of strikes, that positions were destroyed, and very likely the Ukrainians had some losses. So we see a very heavy, a very big activity of the armed forces of Russian Federation in this direction. Now we are moving to Krasnogorovka. Uh, we discussed uh, already in the previous update that very likely, uh, in the morning we were talking that very likely the Ukrainians managed to restore uh, the control over the southern part of uh, Novomikhailovka, but today we can make 100% conclusion that the Ukrainians control entire uh, Krasnogorovka without even a single building under Russian control. Today we got additional geolocations from the Ukrainians, uh, from the Russian side, how the Russians were bombing and attacking the southern outskirts the southern edge positions of armed forces of Ukraine inside of Krasnogorovka. The Russians discovered few FPV drone operators' positions that were destroyed as a result of artillery fire. The sources, some sources, reported about the Russian attempts to attack along the railways, but yet we haven't received even a single geolocated confirmation of such attempts. So, very likely, those were just speculations. Uh, furthermore, the Russians continue uh, the effective counter artillery duels. Another batch of artillery systems of the armed forces of Ukraine were destroyed to the west, north, and to the west of Krasnogorovka and to the west of Georgievka. A few artillery systems, uh, some tanks, some uh, positions, some hidden positions uh, of M777 Hovodzer. So everything is according to schedule. Now we are moving to the north in direction of Vadiana and Pervomaiska, probably the most interesting and the most important area and uh, just uh, to remind you that a few days ago probably two days ago the minister of defense of russian federation reported that the russians managed to establish complete control over the village by the name of Adyan, and so that's why we changed the color of the area and that was the edge positions of the Russians. Later we got a few updates uh, from the Ukrainian sources, uh, from the Russian sources as well, how the Ukrainians were trying to counter-attack the Russians in Nabirajina Street, but uh, those attacks were repelled by the Russians, the Ukrainians having significant losses, where those who managed to survive after those attacks were forced to fall back, and today we got geolocation already from the Ukrainian sources, from the Ukrainian side, on this video, for example, we can see the movement of the Russian personnel carrier who was, let's say, moving along Vadyane uh, to the western outskirts of the village. At some point, the Russians managed to cross the area and then the Russians landed the infantry. We can count even the number of soldiers. There were around one, two, three, four, five, six soldiers exactly in that operation. The Russians landed and started clearing the trenches. Uh, the Ukrainians, when they discovered the movements of the Russians, started bombing and attacking them heavily with different types of weapon and according to information we have the Ukrainians the Russians managed to uh, save control over the positions to dig in deeper and to improve the Russian foothold further to the west of Vadiana. so that's why we have adjusted the map and currently the Russians as you can see have established additional control over additional positions and the most important the most important the Russians managed to answer these three lines so this approximately the edge Russian positions on already in the direction. So we see that uh, um, uh, every single day we start receiving new t the titles of new towns, of new villages and the daily summaries. Um, we, even a month ago, we m maybe somebody uh, didn't even know uh, the town of Nitailova and now Nitailova is going to be probably the most important town during the next few weeks. 
and for example if we calculate the distance between the edge russian positions possible positions of the armed force of russian federation and the first buildings of nitailov the distance is less than 700 meters so uh, it's uh, let's say to from uh, to the southwestern direction of course there is like a vadiana river there is like water bar barrier very likely the russians are not going to cross the area but uh, anyway they can establish some certain fire control over the road between nitailova and the persha this will allow the Russians to ease the, let's say, complete uh, the finishing of Pervomaiskaya battle. And, but the most important Russian things that they managed to achieve is that the Russians entered this forest. Obviously, they were sending additional reinforcements during the day, and now the Russians are able to move further along the tree line, further to the north and then to the west in direction of the road between uh, Yasnabrodovka and Nitailova. Furthermore, the Russians can continue moving further along this, the same tree line and to get as close as possible to Yasnabrodovka from this part. So the Russians managed to get a very important area. Now they will continue under the cover of the trenches and the tree lines on the direction. And uh, we can say that uh, even from this perspective, from these positions, the distance to the main supply road between Nitailova and Yasnabrodovka is around 1.5 kilometers so the battle for this part of the foothold is about to be finished furthermore i'll remind you that just a few days ago we were talking that the russians managed to destroy the bridge in durna river and to cut some um, um, this Umanska village in two parts, the northern and the southern part. So basically we can make a conclusion that Yasnabrodovka is already appeared in some kind of encirclement because most of the roads uh, are under already physical control fire control or some of the roads are no longer exist due to destroyed or damaged bridges or some infrastructure probably the only way how the ukrainians can support their forces in yasnabrodovka in this small artillery pocket is to send forces let's say through the western through the western road let's say from ptiche this one then to this residential karlovka water reservoir area and then probably through the field fields uh, further to the east in direction of Yasnabrodovka. So this is probably the only road that Ukrainians left for the Ukrainians to support their forces in Yasnabrodovka. But even though the Russians have already established some fire control even over this territory, on this video, for example, we can see another Ukrainian Max Pro that was moving in the area. The Russians, as a result of reconnaissance operation, managed to discover the movements of Ukrainian personnel carrier. And as a result of, uh, let's say, artillery strike, that carrier was destroyed. So these, uh, these only, let's say, supplied road is already under uh, complete Russian fire control. So we can say that uh, this area is also under complete artillery fire control and uh, the days of this area are numbered and they're every single minute, every single day is getting closer, closer to zero. So this is the situation for Pervomaiska, uh, Nitailova, Yasnabrodovka, Umanska area and uh, foothold. Furthermore, the Russians continue the access successful counter artillery duels and as a result of another artillery strike, the Ukrainians lost another artillery system that they were trying to hide somewhere in the vicinity of Mizhova. As a result of Krasnopol, of course, that system was destroyed. So, Berdichi. As you can see, we don't have lots of geolocations, but the geolocations we have are very important and very interesting. First of all, we have some geolocations from the Ukrainian side. They continue, to be more precisely, the forces of 47th mechanized brigade continue bombing and attacking the Russian forces in the eastern part of Berdichi. And the Russians from their side published also very interesting video from, uh, let's say, the road between Berdichi itself and, let's say, Novobakhmutovka and then Achiretsna. So one of the main supply roads that's still left for the ukrainians on this video we can see uh, the russian fpv drone heading and attacking the abandoned ukrainian max pro somewhere on this supply road a uh, few important things from the video this is like international max pro and this max pro was damaged and probably destroyed by the russian fpv drone strike so what is important and what is interesting from this video first of all uh, i would like to pay your attention to the main window of max pro of the driver window this is driver window and if you take a look at the bottom right corner you can see the uh, signs of the bullets 
So as I understand, uh, the Ukrainians, for some reason, decided to abandon this Max Pro. And as you can see, the doors are open, so the uh, Max Pro was abandoned uh, during this road. Uh, and the thing is, as I understand, uh, the Russians do have already access for their sabotage and reconnaissance group uh, to, for, to establish control, or they have already established control over this supply road. So if we return back to the map, this is the supply road that Ukrainians uh, at least we're using to support their forces and to support the resistance in Berdychy and as for some reason somewhere in the middle of the road the Ukrainian Max Pro was abandoned and later destroyed with FPV drone strike and we have signs of the work of Russian sabotage and reconnaissance group. So very likely once again the Russians uh, do have possibilities to send forces exactly in the area and to stop and to attack the uh, let's say light vehicles, armored personnel carriers that are moving from Novobakhmutovka to Berdychy. So this video first of all confirms uh, that the Russians have already established probably fire, complete fire control over the road and the Ukrainians are no longer able to use this area. All these updates, all these geolocations confirms that within the next uh, few days very likely the Ukrainians or those who are still in, in Berdychy will be forced to fall back and Berdychy will fall and the Russians will capture this territory as well. Uh, there are still Ukrainian positions in the west western part of the village. Uh, this area probably is covered with the gray zone or with the fog of war because during the previous days we got reports about the Russian control over the territory that later didn't confirmed by by no by any resource. So this is the situation for Berdych and Simonovka. Very interesting video we got from Novokalinova area. If you remember the previous configuration of the map, you uh, would say you remember that uh, the line of combat contact on the on this direction was going along the railways. And now we see we have adjusted the map and according to geolocation, geolocation that was published um, according to video that was published by the Ukrainians, the Russians managed to establish control over the farms and the Ukrainians are saying that they were FPV droning the Russian forces inside of the farms. So uh, we don't know and we don't have video where how exactly the Russians managed to capture the farms. Uh, very likely that was another sabotage and reconnaissance group that they managed to cross the fields and to answer the farms and to force the Ukrainians to fall back from the area. Now the Ukrainians were forced to start using drones to force the Russians to fall back. Anyway, despite the how exactly the Russians captured, this is significant progress and as you can see according to uh, this farm according to the location of the farm the russians are on the outskirts and the first buildings of uh, novokalinova and we're talking about stipova street and sadova street uh, currently i can't tell you for sure whether the russians are planning to launch a rush attack uh, towards this village uh, the main reason of that is if we take a look at the video once again the what we um can't, can't see on the video is complete absence now, what we can see on the video is complete absence of trenches and fortifications. So very likely the farms used to be in the gray zone that neither the Russians nor the Ukrainians were able to control. But as a result of some offensive operation, the Russians captured. Now they need some time to dig in deeper to prepare some fortifications, some long-term fortifications to bring additional reinforcements. And after that, very likely the Russians may try or try their luck to attack Novokalinovo with the purpose to cut the main road, Pershatravnyva, between Acheretina and, let's say, uh, New York and uh, Tarietsk agglomeration. So, and this will allow the Russians to move and to attack probably in the very near future Keramik and Achiretina from the east, from the area that the Ukrainians didn't expect the Russians, don't expect the Russians can use for offensive. So, very interesting situation. We will follow this area. Now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction where we also got a lot of different updates, significant number to be more, more precisely. And the most important updates are coming from Bogdanovka. We have a lot of mappers have updated updating updated their maps uh, some sources are saying that the russians established complete control over bogdanovka and some sources are saying that ukrainians just left bogdanovka and the russians currently trying to uh, let's say take under control by clearing the area step by step but uh, some sources are saying that uh, the ukrainians start running away under, under the russian pressure so many opinions but let's try to understand to figure out what exactly uh, ha is happening in Bogdanovka right now and uh, so to understand this first we need to add one line 
uh, this is the line I'm try I'm planning to add. So uh, this is uh, something like a barrier, like a border. So everything that located on top left of this yellow line is Ukrainian positions, are Ukrainian positions, and these positions are located on the hill and the Russian positions are located in the lowland. Currently, I can't tell you for sure the distance, the like, differences between the heights of these two, let's say, positions, so maybe 50 meters, maybe 20 meters, but anyway, according to information we have, uh, the Ukrainians on the hill can see and can observe uh, the Bogdanovka like uh, as if there is no problems and no barriers at all. So basically, we can make a conclusion that if we summarize everything, every single map or every single update from the ground, currently the Russians establish control over something like this in Bogdanovka or about to establish control as soon as they finish the clearing operation in this part of the village. Uh, the Ukrainians once again abandoned their positions not, let's say, as a result of damage, as a result of losses. They basically uh, abandoned their positions to the hill and now they try to control the village uh, from, let's say, better positions and using significant benefits of this area. Uh, I can't tell you for sure for how long the Russians are able to hold Bogdanovka. Obviously, the Russians need to continue offensive further because without taking under control of these hills, the Russians will suffer significant losses every day as a result of Ukrainian FPV drone strikes and as a result of Ukrainian mortar strikes. So they need to move further. But to do this, uh, uh, first of all, and it's better to attack this area from behind of this forest because this is much more better positions to attack. But but once again, the Ukrainians during the previous uh, few weeks when they realized and understood that Chasavyar is going to be the primary target for the Russians have redeployed significant number of fresh forces on the area and the most important the Ukrainians redeployed the forces of 93rd mechanized brigade fresh forces uh, they redeployed them probably from Kupinsk direction and the thing is that uh, the Russians have already reported that as a result of redeployment so an elite unit of the uh, Ukrainian special forces and the 93rd Brigade of the um, Ukraine Armed Forces was destroyed in Chasavyar after a strike by Russian aerospace forces. Two, fab, two uh, 500 FABs hit the building in the technical school in which the Ukraine Armed Forces set up a fire safety operation. So uh, they have redeployed. Of course, the Russians discovered that and as a result of attack, that position was destroyed. Furthermore, the Ukrainians continue concentrating forces, uh, not uh, probably in the eastern part, but very likely in the central and the western part the Russians of course see everything and they start attacking the Ukrainians every single day when talking about Chasavyar itself uh, the Russians continue clearing operation with FPV drones on this video we can see Baba Yaga the FPV drone entering Chasavyar and then start bombing the Ukrainian soldiers on the ground we see uh, more artillery strikes in the central part and aviation strikes in the same area so as you can see, the Russians are using not just infantry artillery, the Russians are using Su-25, significant number to uh, more precisely, like wave by wave, Su-25s are bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions in the eastern part, in the central part of Chasavyar. So a lot of waves every single day, a lot of flights, and of course we see complete absence of any air defense and any resistance from the Ukrainian side. The Russians are flying above Chasavyar itself and no resistance from the Ukrainians. So the situation is difficult and very likely the Ukrainians will be forced to fall back but for now they will try to hold the area as long as possible because until the Ukrainians are able to hold Kalinovka and the northern part of Bogdanovka the longer the longer they can control the eastern part of Chasavyar but as soon as they lose Bogdanovka and Kalinovka we can start even counting days of the central and the western part of Chasavyar and we are not talking about the foothold from uh, this eastern block towards Klishy and now we are moving further to Solidar direction. We have some updates from this territory as well. The Russians continue clearing operation in the vicinity of Razdolovka with FPV drones. But as you can see, uh, starting this month, we stop receiving any updates from Razdolovka. During the previous three weeks, we got almost two, three updates per day. And now we stop receiving anything. Very difficult to understand uh, why is uh, why the thing is happening like this. Maybe the Russians, maybe that was 
uh, special operation from the Russian side to force the Ukrainians to redeploy some um, reserves on this area. And since the Ukrainians did that, the Russians moved further to other direction. Can't tell you for sure. The sources reported about additional Russian progress along the railways towards Vimka and that the Russians managed to capture additional 200 meters. Bilogorovka. The Russians continue offensive operation. Uh, for now, uh, during the previous 24 hours or 48, they haven't conducted even a single ground operation. They were bombing and attacking the um, discovered Ukrainian positions, uh, those that Ukrainians uh, revealed uh, during the previous days of uh, a special military operation, and uh, very likely the next few days the Russians will make another attempt. Now we are moving to the southern Tierney, to the southern Kupin's direction, where we got significant, very interesting details and updates. And um, today I made a conclusion based on the geolocations we received that the situation on this direction develops obviously in Ukrainian favor, but and not in Russian favor. The Ukrainians during the previous 24 hours, during the previous weeks, managed to redeploy a significant number of br fresh brigades, uh, fully blooded brigades, uh, uh, first to repel the Russian attacks and probably maybe to even start some counter attacks. Now we have on the direction the forces of 21st Mechanized Brigade, we have the 18th Slavyansk Brigade of National Guard, we have 71st Jaeger Brigade, we have 95th Air Assault Brigade that was redeployed from Donetsk and um, Avdiivka direction, we have the forces of 60th Brigade, Mechanized Brigade and we have significant number of forces in Crimea Forest, the number and quantity of soldiers which is unknown due to the let's say forest and that most of the forces are hidden so what did happen during the previous 24 hours i believe you already know the russians made another offensive operation trying to penetrate the Ukraine defense belt with significant number of armored vehicles and uh, the some uh, let's say pro-ukrainian sources counted the level of losses of the armored forces of russian federation just on the line and just uh, on the line the russians lost uh, probably uh, some of the armored vehicles were damaged, some of them were destroyed, some of them were abandoned, but there were around 31 armored vehicles. So now let's discuss in details the attack that the Russians conducted during the previous days, and that was very interesting. I'll uh, share with you the details about this attack. So as you can see, the Russians were using significant number of armored vehicles, tanks, personal carriers, more tanks, maybe five or s seven tanks and additional personal carriers. And um, as you can see, when the Russians reach this part of Tyranny direction, they, where they, Ukrainians start bombing and attacking them with APV drones. And as soon as the Ukrainians start bombing and attacking, first the Russians stopped for some reason. Uh, maybe they start uh, making decision what to do next, whether to move further or to turn the convoy and start heading back to, let's say, Crimea Forest. At some point, the Russians decided to proceed, to move further. And that was probably their biggest uh, mistake, as you can see see it just take a look on this video this is the newly created cemetery of russian armored vehicles just on this uh, small picture we can count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven to uh, up to 20 armored vehicles just on this video and so what is interesting in that what was uh, the most interesting part of that attack i'll try to explain to you so this attack of course was repelled on this video we see the russians abandon their tank and start moving and running away so what was the most important and interesting part of the video uh, this episode exactly this episode was the most important and the most interesting just let's pause the video and uh, i would like to point your attention to this construction on the head of the tank of the tank so this is the tank as you can see and this is something green on the top on the towel of the of the tank so what is this and according to the ukrainians uh, they're calling this um, let's say equipment like a tsar uh, electronic warfare equipment or in english let's call it like king electronic warfare equipment uh, as i understand based on the title uh, this electronic warfare equipment was created by the russians and according to them to some technical documentation this electronic warfare equipment should have suppressed and destroyed uh, every single type of drone that exists and was created and probably would be created uh, for many many years um, ahead so that was like um, one of the the rarest and uh, uh, very expensive uh, let's say 
uh, equipment that the Russians established on the tank. The tank was in the head of the convoy and the main purpose of that tank and that equipment was to suppress every single Ukrainian drone that the Ukrainians could use to attack the Russian convoy. But uh, when watching this video we see that the, this equipment maybe uh, didn't work maybe the ukrainians found a solution maybe some engineers when they established the equipment did something wrong maybe they uh, let's say uh, turned on uh, let's say wrong buttons or something like this but we see that this equipment didn't work and basically the entire russian convoy was destroyed by fpv drones uh, that should have been let's say suppressed and jammed by that equipment so that was the main thing and uh, after the ukrainians destroyed the russian convoy a uh, few more ukrainians some soldiers of course um, moved to this area because um, at first they didn't realize that they destroyed that king electronic warfare equipment but when they realized they sent some reconnaissance and sabotage group and the ukrainians evacuated that tank with that equipment later the ukrainian sources published the photo of that equipment and uh, that equipment was to tell the truth damaged and destroyed by the ukrainians by fpv drone operators so um, the ukrainians didn't had uh, didn't have anything they didn't got anything uh, but anyway we see that uh, very very you know, funny situation if we can call it like this so anyway what i'm trying to tell you is that the situation is getting worse and worse on this direction the ukrainians concentrated significant number of forces if we increase the numbers of this since the beginning of march we see complete ukrainian superiority with fpv drones and all these things all these updates are telling at least me that very likely very likely the Ukrainians during the next uh, few weeks, if the situation continues to develop the same way, if the Russians will not find a solution, if the Russians don't find the solution how to solve these problems of the foothold, the Ukrainians will start counteroffensive. And because the Russians are pretty exhausted on the direction already, and the Ukrainians do have some chances to restore control over these positions. Just, it's uh, of course, it's my opinion, and um, I'm not telling you that this is exactly what is going to happen, but uh, something tells me that uh, the next uh, few weeks the Ukrainians will counterattack on this direction, and the Russians will be forced to fall back uh, to Kriminaya and the Dibrova area. So let's follow this area, and obviously. Soon we're going to understand what is going to happen there. Uh, Kharkiv, uh, during the previous 24 hours, the, Ru the Russians conducted significant number of aviation and missile strikes, drone strikes, a lot of explosions, and the sources on the ground are saying that the Russians destroyed the last, let's say, uh, energy facility equipment, and the Kharkiv is not going to have electricity and have let's say normal work until the end of uh, this year the, we have few videos of explosions the results of the strikes as you can see more videos and so on and today the sources published very interesting picture of the use of internet so as you can see on the 22nd of march when there was the heaviest attack we see the complete fall of the use of internet and before that we see the stable work of internet after that we see a very big problems with internet and just i would like to point your attention the further we're moving to the right we see that the situation is getting worse and worse and the author of this video claims that uh, this picture shows not just the problems with internet but also uh, it shows that people stop stop using internet um, uh, the further we are moving from the 22nd of march till the 7th of april which confirms that ukrainians start leaving kharkov because they understand that there are going to be no normal life anymore in this area and uh, we have few updates uh, from Kiev itself, uh, as we discussed, according to some military experts of the Western countries, uh, by the end of 2026, the Ukrainians will lose additional 20% of the territory. So, and uh, Zelensky continue uh, telling everybody that uh, Russia, by before the beginning of June, is going to mobilize additional, let's say, 300,000 people. But Zelensky says that this is not the final number. Maybe the number is going to be much, much higher. And that's it for uh, this video. Military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.